I have a podcast radio channel where I discuss various horror topics, as well as different stories that may be brought to my attention. For years, I've covered various topics such as paranormal activity horror stories, real life tragic and terrifying situations, as well as various horror movies and other tropes. Over the past year, I also covered the explorations of a rather famous YouTuber, John Allen. John's content was always rather interesting to watch and discuss. In fact, I even had the privilege to have him on my show one time. The thing that separates John's work from other creators is his use of old film cameras to try to give a more eerie sensation in his travels. He uses a recorder to discuss and then he overlaps them with the footage to give more of an old and rather vintage effect. Now, in recent events things had turned rather strange regarding John. You see, he made a post about an old abandoned warehouse just outside the outskirts of Newcastle. He said he'd be posting a video within a week in regards to exploring that wretched place. But a week went by and things seemed idle in his social media. So people began to wonder if something had happened to him. I was contacted by a friend of mine in Newcastle regarding the ill news about John. Most of his friends and family were aware of his work and his travel to that warehouse. So after John didn't come back the night before and didn't answer his phone, they got rather suspicious and worried. Soon enough, police had been asked to go to the place, only to find John's belongings, but no sign of him. Furthermore, no body was found and there were no signs of a potential struggle, so the case was still active and still is. There was no response from the police on what had happened, yet one of my subscribers sent me a rather strange find. An email was sent to me, which included one file, a video format one. The video was about 10 minutes long, and just by the thumbnail I can understand this was some form of old video similar to those of John's work. After watching it, however, I have only one thing I must say. In all my years of watching horror movies and talking about ghouls and demons, I've never seen anything like this. The video is in the same format as John would have done, and the voice is identical. Either this is the lost tape and contents of John's last travels, or the man who did this had made an exceptional work in mimicking John. I've written what I saw in that video in the following paragraphs. For John's sake. The video begins with a long distance shot of the old warehouse. Its old structure, black and barren, lays alone amidst the yellow fields of wheat. The sun was looming behind it, barely visible from the murky clouds. Colors splashed onto them, with hues of crimson and orange, setting a scene of slight terror. The dark and empty windows were visible through the lens of John's camera, making them appear as lifeless eyes staring back at you. The next scene was John driving to the old warehouse while the camera panned around it following the old dirt road. Every angle of this place screamed wrong as if something was laying there forgotten and left to rot. Before John was ready to enter the old warehouse, he took a moment to film the scenery around that dreadful place. The sun was fading away and the moon was coming out. The horizon was filled with a faint dark blue of the summer night that was begging to tower above the wheat fields. Stars were barely visible as the noise of the film was making things more obscure by the moment. It is here where John's recorded voice begins to narrate his trip. Such a beautiful sight. The air is rather fresh today. The scent of what and other rustic fragrances are all over the place. Anyways. Hello guys, it's me John and welcome to another video of urban exploration within UK's most forgotten places. Today we're visiting the Brandon and Son warehouse in Newcastle. This old warehouse was supposedly built in the 1980s near their wheat farm. I think if we travel a little northwards from here, we may be able to find their house. That'd be an amazing future project. Now, the reason why I came here is that my research tells me one of the brothers had owed quite a bit to some mobsters. 
Allegedly, the mobsters found him working in his warehouse one fateful afternoon, and as punishment and warning to his brother, they grabbed him and placed him inside one of these old hay balers. Afterwards, they placed his corpse, which was within a hay bale, inside the warehouse. A couple of days later, the older brother was found missing, and with it the old warehouse was left to rot. So here I am, entering the old warehouse. The place stinks of old dust and rotten wheat. From where I stand, I can see an open space before me with various tables and chairs that have been placed here and there. One can see the passage of time on this old place. The walls are pale and dry, rotting and decaying as if a corpse. Their skin is shed, and huge chunks of plaster are covering the once stone floor. The windows are mostly broken and shattered, either by human or natural causes. The crunching sound of broken glass and plaster echoes in this forgotten place. The first floor is rather vague, and as expected of a warehouse, there are high shelves made out of iron which is now red and corroded and looks fragile. The air seems heavier the more I distance myself from the entrance, as the claustrophobic space, along with the stench of this place, is making it hard to breathe. I'm going to leave the recorder here for a bit, maybe it'll pick something up. John places the recorder somewhere nearby and continues filming the old warehouse. With his flashlight, the gloomy place was illuminated and its once dark corners are revealed to us. There are two floors as it's visible from the footage, one where John is and presumably the storage area, and the second where one can see the iron railing going around the warehouse, where the offices perhaps are situated. John roamed around in the now empty storage area, his flashlight causing shadows to be long and unnatural. Everything seemed peaceful, however, up until he swiftly turned around to point towards the entrance, where, for a brief moment, an old wine bottle was seen rolling onto the floor. He pointed his flashlight at it and quickly picked up his recorder again. Have you seen that? The damn bottle just rolled. Before that, I heard a strange noise as if rustling. Perhaps it could be a critter or something, but I think it's time to move a bit forwards. I think I saw a small garage door just before the steps that go up to the second floor. John then began to walk towards the old metal stairs. He then halted and took a quick glimpse to his left. There he saw a closed wooden door with its planks rotten. Can you hear it? John said quietly. There was a faint buzzing sound that was emitting from behind the wooden door. Amidst the buzz, however, there was a distinct whisper that I managed to pick up, a raspy voice that sounded inhuman. However, I couldn't pick up the words as things were becoming more inaudible on the video. That's strange, guys. I kind of want to see what's inside here. I think I saw something metallic through the cracks of the door, but I'm not sure. I'm going to head upstairs first, and then perhaps when I come back down, I'll try to open it. John began to ascend the metallic staircase, which in turn began to creak. The corroded iron was forming holes with sharp teeth and rugged edges ready to impale anyone who's not careful. There were long hallways and abandoned offices bringing back memories from old horror movies for me. I thought I saw shadows move, shapes of men behind windows moving with the darkness. Alright guys, so here's the deal. Currently it's 8pm. And I've been thinking I'm going to leave the recorder for a while here upstairs while I record with my camera, hoping to pick something up. I'm also thinking perhaps I could stay after midnight to see if any strange activity might be present. There were some shots of the upper floor, mostly broken offices and wet and crackling papers that were littering the place. But the most horrifying capture was the one that would follow. There was a scene where John was filming himself sitting with his back to the wall. 
The flashlight was placed on the floor next to his camera, illuminating his right side. I could see in the video a shadowy figure making its way across the corridor. John didn't seem to notice, but after another moment he turned to his left and quickly pressed his recorder. Here, the sounds that are heard were strange and obscure. There was a howling wind that was present, and with it carried faint whispers and a buzzing, similar to the one that I heard when John was downstairs. John picks up the camera and begins walking downstairs in a hurry. He closes his flashlight, and through the recording I can hear his slight heavy breathing. There was a deep swallow as if fear took over. His breath was becoming deeper, and some faint whispers came out of his mouth. Okay, it's probably my imagination. God, that was scary. Okay, guys, I thought I saw someone move upstairs, but I don't see anything now from here. Perhaps it was my mind playing tricks. Since I'm down here, I might as well try that door. It looks slightly open. Upon entering, the face of an old truck was revealed with a broken windshield facing John. Its metal grill was covered in rust and splashes of mud and dust were covering its hood. As he walked around it, he saw that hay bales were stacked here and there, and then he finally understood what he was witnessing. That's the hay baler. That's probably the one the mobsters used to kill the youngest of the Brandon brothers. It's the same model. What a discovery. What is that buzzing sound, though? John began to walk around the old truck, and here is where it gets truly horrifying. The camera captured a brief moment, but the rest was heard through John's recorder. The video footage picked up a strange hay bale that looked like it was moving. Two holes appear in it, and two wide eyes can be seen staring back. John drops his camera, and the rest of his horrors were heard through the speakers of my computer. Oh my god. It's crawling over me. It, it itches. Oh god, it's stench. Some Somebody help. I, I, I can't breathe. Suddenly, there's the sounds of suffocation. His legs thumped onto the floor as if a last attempt to escape the grasps of whatever it was. And then John went silent. For a brief moment, there was just this silence before it was replaced by something unearthly. A sound was heard, as if a rope was being tightened, and it was followed by a crunching and blobbing sound of bones and meat being chewed. That buzzing grew louder. I can't say I wasn't disturbed from watching the whole ordeal, and it made me incapable of distinguishing it from fiction or reality. I was left alone in my study room, staring at a black screen, thinking to myself, what the hell have I just witnessed? The open window from behind me gave way into a sudden breeze that caused shivers to run down my spine. I felt the wind carrying with it sounds of the nearby fields, rustling sounds and I was terrified. I don't know if I'm going to put this on my podcast. Something tells me it should be kept away from the world.